I am joined by Dr. Susan Lozier from T Georgia Tech, a leading voice in the scientific community. Today, she'll share her insights on the breakthroughs that have shaped the, our ability to tackle global challenges and how interdisciplinary collaboration can drive the next wave of innovation in addressing urgent issues like climate change, health, and sustainability. Hello, and thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here, Rachel. So what innovative solutions do you see as being critical for addressing the world's most urgent issues? And how can science continue to be a driving force for change? Thanks for asking that, Rachel. I'm going to start by just briefly explaining that my area of research is focused on the ocean's role in climate. Okay. And so I'm critically interested in how the ocean is being impacted by the warming we see. And everything we see now, if we talk about how can we take care of the ocean warming, the sea level rise, the ice melt, the ocean acidification, every single one of those changes in the ocean stems from the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. So I'm sure you've talked to a number of people about the innovative solutions to either draw down CO2 or to reduce the amount of CO2, but I want to mention another one. So um, when those waters are drawn down at high latitudes during the winter, um, they carry with them anthropogenic CO2. And the good news is the ocean has drawn down about 40% of the anthropogenic CO2, and that means that it's no longer in the atmosphere where it can co contribute to warming. But the bad news is, is that it's leading to ocean acidification. Mm -hmm. So the solution, of course, is to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide um, in the atmosphere. But another solution, though, that's critically needed for those that are concerned about um, ecosystems in the ocean is trying to understand how that acidification is impacting marine life throughout the ocean and where. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of measurements of salinity, temperature, less so, you know, or the velocity. But really what we need is a large scale deployment of more what are called the biogeochemistry Argo floats that can really tell us where the ocean acidity is increasing such that then we might be able to have more um, marine protected areas or conservation parks. So that's sort of another angle that people don't necessarily think about. Like we all know like we have to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. Yeah. But in the meanwhile, we need solutions and new technology that helps us know where, what are the most vulnerable parts of the ocean. So I'm very interested in, um, in development in that area. And what emerging fields do you see transforming the way we approach problems like climate change, sustainability, and health? As you may know, Rachel, because you're, you're in this field as well, um, we haven't done the best job of really engaging a broad, diverse group of people in the United States and globally. And just when we think about how there is um, mischaracterization of science in general, that also applies to geosciences, I think our next frontier is really trying to figure out how we can engage local communities so that they understand how our work as scientists impacts the health of their community, their own health, such that when the children are in those communities and they go to school, like we're really trying to, you know, provide that pipeline from a very, very much a um, community engagement uh, piece. So looking to the future, mm -hmm. what role can interdisciplinary collaboration play in shaping solutions to complex global issues? So as an oceanographer, my entire academic career has been about, has been interdisciplinary and thinking about that together. Because you, it's hard to talk about ocean physics without thinking about ocean chemistry, you know, and ocean biology. And also as an oceanographer who studies large scale global currents, that also includes, um, you know, international collaborations as well. But increasingly, just like the problem I talked about earlier, increasingly we understand that we can't really um, figure out how that carbon dioxide is getting to the deep ocean unless we understand the physics, which is what, what I understand, um, and also, you know, that we need, we need to understand the biology. But what this really comes back to is like, we know this, we know that we need um, to have um, an interdisciplinary study. It really comes back to how we're educating. And so um, this is really touches on my role, not just as a researcher, but as a dean um, in, a, in a college of sciences. There, are some changes in how we are teaching, but we're still primarily teaching along disciplinary lines. Yeah. And so until we can really sort of break that mold, I think we won't necessarily see the real advances that we need to in interdisciplinary sciences. So for me, it starts um, 
I think I'm going to say academicians like me have that responsibility to really to think more creatively about how we're educating students, undergraduate and graduate students. Yeah, absolutely. The education is where all of that starts, all of the innovation and all of the science. Says someone who's in education. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all this insight with us. Sure. Happy to. Thank you. Thank you.